Okay, so the, um, what Luis asked me to talk about is uh, the uh, ability to uh, build in stroke centers as well as the workflow that we have in Chicago for the management of acute stroke. This is uh, very close to my heart and I, I really would like you to uh, go through this with me. There's no doubt that uh, stroke in the United States is still a big problem because we have impacted the mortality, but not so much the morbidity. So it's still number one causes disability. So I think this is going to change because of this. We have now data showing us that uh, what to do when acute stroke is happening. Of course, we saw the earlier lecture, can you prevent? Great. But if you can't prevent, how can you minimize the, um, the problems that stroke can cause to us? So, we, since 2005, became a primary stroke center. So in the United States, you have a designation. This is by the Joint Commission of Primary Stroke Center, a comprehensive stroke center, uh, 28 bad uh, neuroscience ICU. We still don't have a designated acute stroke unit, but we have acute stroke. Um, all the beds and nurses are prepared to take care of patients with stroke. So we flux depending on the size of the, uh, or the demand needed. In 2013, we became a comprehensive stroke center. So for us, the most important advice I can give you here is um, uh, maybe it's a good idea to create a quality project. And as a quality project, you uh, can merge the neurology part of it, which is what does the TPA and intravenous TPA, as well as uh, maybe what's usually the first step of a stroke center is to start that uh, initial um, acute stroke response with uh, intravenous TPA, which was the data we had for a long time. But how you mix the interventional component uh, with to that the, and you become then a comprehensive stroke center, it's sometimes quite complex because these departments or these uh, teams are not working together. So it's very important that if you can create a quality project and combine the medical and the surgical component into uh, one stroke center, it's, um, it's a real challenge. Now, the initial steps for us, if you follow this, it's more or less uh, the um, uh, kind of the, the steps you have to take to be able to uh, wrap this around and make a, you know, one workflow. And it's the key, the key part for me is to, of course, um, when you have a, a team like this, you define the team, it should be a very much an open door, uh, people that would like to participate, but they need then, they have responsibilities and roles on that. And each medical center will have a different type of arrangement for a team. So we create a, there is an a acute stroke response. And then within that response, if it meets criteria for intervention, we activate something called stroke 60, which is the interventional component of the stroke uh, um, uh, care. Um, this is what the stroke team uh, would look like. Uh, each member of the team has a definition of their role, what they have to do during the stroke code. And um, I think for me this is, was a key portion of responsibility and integration of the teams because anytime a stroke comes in, the, the neurology team will take the lead on the initial assessment, but the moment it meets criteria, and this is not a decision of the stroke neurologist, it's very much a criteria that's been agreed on, and we review that on a weekly basis to make sure that we're all following uh, the indications that we define up front. But once you do that, uh, you define it as a possible interventional patient, you activate the stroke 60, and then all the intervention team gets involved. This is a minimal criteria for mechanical thrombectomy, so you have to have this type of criteria in your hospital. It doesn't mean that uh, this is the only way, this is dynamic, this is changing uh, as new evidence becomes available, and also new trials. So today we're doing wake-up strokes and so forth as part of a trial. So that becomes acceptable with the inclusion-exclusion criteria. But this has to be defined up front. You cannot be deciding if a stroke is going to go or not at the day the stroke is happening. This is something you should know up front. Now, there are four ways how a stroke gets into the hospital. Either it's a drip and ship, either it's a EMS, a 911 call in the United States, or a walk in through the emergency room, or it's an in-house stroke. So you have to have identification in your medical center how the patients come in, and you define then a workflow. Each one of them will have a different workflow. This is an example of how a patient that was transferred from another hospital on IV TPA 
to our hostel, what happens with that case. And this is defined for each one of them. Very important, you should know the concept of mothership and uh, drip and ship. Uh, mothership are the uh, medical centers that receive the patients in the emergency room and they treat everything in their own hostel. Drip and ship are the patients that receive TPA in another hostel and are transferred to you. There's no question there's a time difference from onset of stroke and going through multiple hostels or going directly to your hostel. But the key part here is that you try to keep a balance in your hostel. And if you're doing too much drip and ship, try to improve your mothership and, and so forth. So you have both uh, skill sets. It's very important. Um, the workflow uh, uh, for qual and, and of this, this uh, stroke center depends a lot on this quality program. So everything that we do is evaluated. Uh, we got uh, awards for that uh, performance during Swift Prime, so that was very nice to us. But let me share with you perhaps what we've been most successful, which is the drip and ship model. This is the number of all the hostels. They're not owned by our system. They're very much partnerships, and uh, we provide to them telemedicine. And this is more or less just an example. It's almost about 10,000 uh, consultations a year um, that you receive for a stroke. These are actually stroke admissions that come through this, but they are not all coming to our hospital. They are, uh, we provide uh, what is called this telestroke uh, uh, opinion. And then we decide which ones need to be transferred or not. So you don't want to be transferring every stroke. You cannot support in your hospital every stroke. So you have to have a good screening tool up front to define who comes in and who can stay um, at home. And this is a great example of looking at uh, how many patients, the gray ones are the consults, the red is the transfer. So the transfer is much smaller, but the TPA rate uh, intervenous, you provide a lot of TPA treatments, even though the patient is not transferred to your hospital. Um, now, this is very important. When you talk about quality programs, you have to have standards or what, how fast that care is delivered. This is in 2015, and this is a, it was a, initially, there's no really uh, guidelines to all this, so we created this during the Swift Prime time. Now, 2016, this is the new uh, workflow now for us and the new um, time points. So as the program is evaluated, you have to have a reassessment of what the times are possible to do and how you push the envelope more and more. So this is today's, uh, the, the main goal is to get, uh, if you go through CT scan or MRI, both are available 24 seven, and then you decide if you're gonna go and the times, uh, if you're hitting those marks or not. We do use aspects. Uh, we are using, moving away. Now, right now, it's basically, you have to do a CAT scan. You define about uh, the patient um, hemorrhagic or ischemic. And then after that, you have to prove they have a large vessel occlusion. That's what uh, the initial evaluation, CT scan and CTA. Um, we are moving away from uh, rapid and, and perfusion cells much more now in towards perhaps the assessing collaterals. That seems to be the new trend towards uh, stroke assessment. But the rapid software uh, used to be something that we use in many trials. In dawn trial, we do have this. You receive in your phone basically an idea of the core as an estimated core and the mismatch area that sends, that is sent to all the team members and then we decide. Uh, if the patient continues to be a candidate or not. Now, I'm going to quickly move into how this workflow uh, is, it's how we communicate, which is the key part of this. So during the stroke code, we have something called Join, and this app uh, is something you can download today. It's a free app uh, in your phone, uh, in a smartphone. It basically, what it does allows you to register a patient, and this then allows the whole team to see at all times, and it's basically uh, data protected, so it's, it's uh, HIPAA compliant, basically. So you then can have the research team, you can have the fellows, everybody, the anesthesia team, everybody in tune of what's happening, and this is really important for uh, the communication of the team. But the most key for me is that you can track the ambulance, so you can see where the ambulance is in traffic prior to getting to the hostel. So that uh, allows you, the team, to go find the patient in the emergency room without having to be waiting in the emergency room, without having anything to do there or just uh, wasting time. So you can actually also communicate with the ambulance using uh, chat that, uh, or uh, messaging. That, so the ambulance is connected to us, telling the patient it's getting worse, it's getting better, and so forth. 
So the team then comes to the emergency room and then in the ER, we're waiting. Uh, as soon as the stroke gets in there, we don't have an admission to the ER. The patient gets immediately taken to the CAT scan from there and um, we have the ability to really make a quick decisions. This is our, um, the, in Chicago it's very cold, minus 20, minus 30, so the ambulances go inside of the hospital to deliver the patient. So you don't have, the, uh, the whole team is actually inside of the hospital waiting for the ambulance to drive in. And you get the patient out and you can prepare yourself if the patient is getting worse, to have anesthesia available or not, depending how things um, are going. Now, this is um, the workflow, indoor garage, bypass the emergency room, CAT scan. In CAT scan, you have the whole team there, but the most important thing is that the app also has timestamps. So every one of the steps, the patient, we can quickly log in and schedule a time. The patient got into the hostel and this is time zero. Then you go into CAT scan, time two then go to the angel suite, and those things can then be incorporated into the medical record, which is really important for the assessment of uh, your workflow. Now, okay, what's next? And this is something that is really, really exciting to me now because we started working in our model in the hostel, but now it's time to go outside of the hostel, and we develop a program uh, that uh, is basically going to, is going, being launched as we speak, uh, um, Raul Nogueira is actually a fellow Brazilian that uh, developed this uh, Fast ED app, and we um, very much support uh, as a way to screen on the field if the patient has a large vessel occlusion or a um, uh, not. This is important because it can define if the patient needs to go to a comprehensive stroke center or to a primary stroke center. And if you can do this through a neuro neurological exam and a series of questions, that's what this is. You have, you have uh, this is another app called FastCD, it's also a free download. And you then have a sequence of questions like anticoagulation, uh, the age of the patient, when the symptoms started, and then you assess the patient exam. Weakness, uh, the face, arm, and actually a three item uh, question that you identify the items or not, and then you can go deeper depending on which hemisphere is involved, uh, depending on the answers to, can you show fingers or, or the gaze preference, then you go into a score. And that score has fast ED of four, this is a large vessel occlusion probability of 60 to 80 percent. So then you click down here, and this is on the field, on the patient's home, or whatever the patient, the paramedics were called to, you will then start a connection to join to the other app and tell the, host, the paramedic that uh, this is the distance to the closest comprehensive stroke center you have. And if the fast ED score is zero, the probability of large vessel occlusion is less than 15 percent. And then the, this app will show to the paramedic all the hostels that are nearby and which ones are comprehensive, which ones are primary stroke centers. And because of severity, you know which one to go, and this starts a communication and a route to the team in the hostel. This is just an example of the last 54 uh, patients we did, the time to arrive, time to procedure, all these times get uh, uh, basically, uh, this is a, uh, basically a mean uh, assessment of their, but all the statistics and the way to create quality to this is available to you by creating a system that you register patients like this and you track the time. So it's easy for you to pull reports like that. Now, no question, we're moving away a lot to, to make a, a one-stop shop. As you know, if the patients are screened on the field for large vessel occlusion, we become more and more um, tempted to go directly to the angel suite when you know the patient has a like, high likelihood to, be, to undergo an intervention. And this will probably shave a lot of time for us to do imaging either in the angel suite or on the field. So if you can get an ambulance and, and do the CAT scan, at the patient's house and do a CT angiogram right there. Of course, this is a pilot study right now, but you're seeing where we're going here. We're looking into how can you early on, either by medical, a physical exam and, uh, and um, questions, or by truly getting images to the patient, or having the patient select pray for and having images in the angel suite, we're gonna be able to improve our times. This is our initial project. We're about five miles around Rush Oak Park Hostel, and um, 
it's probably about a population of 350,000 people that we're going to be serving with the, fir the first unit. It's not going to be working all the time, so there's some hours restrictions, and uh, we look forward to see the results that have been shown in different parts of the world with this experience. Um, this is me saying hi to you there, and um, the we have a lot of work to do, and I think that uh, the many trials are going to be helping us to define uh, the, the future of uh, you know how. Uh, we can have an impact outside of the hospital now in on the field, how that screening is going to take place. Uh, there's a lot of research going on, and I think this is going to be an extremely exciting field still to go to, to come. Um, the, yesterday we saw a presentation about the clot uh, and the variability of device you may choose on the clot, but there's also a lot of studies looking at how to identify what type of clot, and this, the imaging uh, studies with uh, some MRI things are, are quite exciting on that area, and I can see in the future this becoming more and more of a focus. Um, the ambulance with CT scan is also helpful for the hemorrhagic type of stroke because imagine as a neurosurgeon we can consider the smaller blood clots perhaps to uh, assess the, the use of a, a early evacuation of hematomas even though they may be deep by using techniques that are a little bit more um, uh, le less invasive in terms of this is a um, the NICO approach is a is like a tubular approach we use that for the spine and other parts of the of the body but now it's coming to the brain and uh, uh, we have to find the ev evidence first that is valuable to remove low volume um, lesions but deep like this if you do that early on maybe uh, uh, a new area for to explore. And there's ongoing research, like MISTI trial, CLEAR trial, and some of these evidence is coming out, and it's being mixed feelings. So we need to see if this is going to be really an area of um, growth. Um, this is, um, I definitely encourage you to log in into this, in Neurovascular Exchange. Our meeting is, is being broadcast uh, there, um, and come to WNC. But there's one thing that I need to share with you. This is a video that we made, and this video actually is available to you in WNC. Uh, I'm sorry, in the um, in the uh, website. Let me see if I can blow this up for you. This video was meant to train the paramedics on how to um, create, a, how to do the FACD score. And uh, let me see if I can do this for you here. I think it's here, right? No. This here? Okay. So basically, this video, it shows all the maneuvers, and this is going to be a free down download. If you go to Neurovascular Exchange, you can download this video, and it shows we can translate this to different languages, too. So we will have a Spanish version. We have actually a Japanese, a Korean version, and uh, English, of course, and Portuguese. So this is a paramedic on the field doing an exam, and it just shows to uh, uh, basically uh, the paramedics how to focus their exam and how to apply the different maneuvers and see what's abnormal and normal so they can score the patient uh, on that. And this is something that uh, I feel we're going to be launching. We have about the 200 paramedics to train, uh, so we need to have tools that will make it easy for them to learn how to do the assessment on the field because the FACD score will dictate if they take them to an interventional hostel or to a TPA hostel. Uh, so this is really an important part. This is a pretty good, huh? The guy's normal. He's doing do a little pronator drift there. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to take it. I know it's late, but uh, this is a pretty cool. Uh, I can show you the whole video here, but it's about two minutes, the video. This, this gaze preference is fantastic. Here, look at this. This is the, um, he cannot go, and then now look at this, this gaze deviation. It's pretty good. It's nesting, no? <laughs> well, no, but he has a, um, we'll discuss that. We know that I did that. This is actually pretty good. Don't give me shit on this. All right, and then um, this is now the, um, Fast CD score, right? And then it shows the next step, where to go, and this is it. So anyway, I want to finish here. Thank, I hope this is informative. Thank you so much for the invitation, and uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you.
Thank you.